Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with your fellow trading colleagues if you find the analysis I provide useful every week. So starting off on trading economics in the week ahead, 27th February and um, I guess the uh, summary is... Um, is that in the US uh, this week, appearances from several Fed officials will be in the spotlight alongside the ISM PMI's release. Elsewhere, investors will follow GDP growth figures for uh, mainly Australia, Canada and Switzerland, PMI's for China and preliminary inflation data for the Eurozone. And again, there's more uh, detail uh, with regards to the um, the releases uh, below. If you want to look for this, just uh, go to tradingeconomics.com um, and it should be in the one of these tabs here. By the time you look at it, hopefully it's still there. So the week ahead, 27 February, click on that and you'll see uh, this um, news update as, as to what really the market is um, is focused on for the week. Anyways, looking at some of the technicals and uh, fundamentals that happened last week and starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies like the euro, the pound and the yen. And the dollar, um, you know, has been uh, a buy and um, I did uh, kind of change my bias uh, slightly uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, you'll see in last week's video where I was thinking that the dollar is probably a short term um, buy, um, at least for you know a month or so, and uh, it's turned out that be to be you know correct. And it's really kind of due to um, the data coming out and supporting the dollar being a buy, right? So um, what was really the data? The data was uh, inflation, and so inflation quickens in the US and Europe and inflation accelerated in the US and Europe last month, highlighting sticky price pressures that will keep uh, central bankers committed to raising interest rates. And in raising interest rates typically has the effect of um, of appreciating a currency because inflation is actually devaluing a currency, right? It's the devaluation of your currency. And so to counter inflation, you have to hike, well, central banks anyway, have to hike interest rates. And so um, the US was, uh, did have a bit of disinflation. So inflation was coming down. But over the past uh, few weeks, uh, there's been supportive evidence that the that inflation um, has remained sticky and maybe not as coming down as fast as was hoped. And so what the market has to do now is actually price in a, maybe a couple more rate hikes. And if they're pricing in a couple more rate hikes, uh, fundamentally, and you see that on a chart, uh, you'll see that basically the dollar should go higher, right? I'm not saying it's going to go in a straight line. No one knows if it's going to go, you know, how it's going to you know go higher. But ultimately, there's no technical analysis or technical level that's going to hold in the face of uh, fundamental analysis and, you know, investors buying uh, what they think is, um, you know, any asset class if it's a buy or selling an asset class if it's a sell. Yes, technical analysis is used and we use it, of course, to time our entries. But ultimately, you use fundamental analysis for your old overall bias and then wait for pullbacks uh, to buy at bargain prices, right? And so um, do I expect this supply zone to hold? Um, uh, possibly, could be. Um, but I would probably say at least in the short term, if I zoom in a bit, I think if the dollar pulls back to, you know, a demand zone, any of these demand zones, and as long as um, the market is still pricing in a few more uh, rate hikes and uh, the data supports that narrative, I think the dollar should uh, be a buy at least for the next, um, you know, month or so. And again, this is data dependent, right? Meaning that if data comes out not supporting um, a rate hike, meaning that inflation actually starts to come down and readings, you know, uh, for inflation, whether it's wage growth, uh, PMIs, etc., start to actually come down, then it lessens the chance of the uh, Federal Reserve or any central bank really having to hike rates and then the market has to price that in, right? So as long as um, inflation is still remaining sticky uh, and uh, high, I would uh, uh, put in my bias is definitely to look to buy the uh, dollar. And I did say this actually last week on last week's video. So I think for me, any pullbacks are going to be decent buying opportunities 
not necessarily on a dollar index, but you're looking at, um, uh, you know, uh, looking at this as confluence and then any kind of uh, buy areas on any other dollar crosses would be where you'd look for uh, buys. And so moving on to the dollar yen and uh, this area was um, quite interesting. Uh, matter of fact, it was looking like it was turning into a bit of a stop hunt. But then with, um, you know, inflation uh, PCE coming out. Um, for the US uh, higher than expected and also the combination that uh, you had um, uh, Udia, right? Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name uh, who is the nominated governor now uh, who's taking over, I think his name is um, uh, Kuroda um, in Japan and he basically warns against magic solutions sticks largely to BOJ current script which is basically uh, Udia um, backs easing for now as more time needed for price goal to normalize policy stop massive bond buys once goal uh, is achieved so the bank of uh, governor nominee uh, Kazuo Udia warned against any magical solution to produce stable inflation and normalize policy as he largely stuck to the existing central bank script in the first parliamentary hearing to approve his appointment. So um, it was seen as fairly dovish, which basically meant that you know the, the market had to kind of pare back its expectation for um, a change and a shift in their in their monetary policy for now it, i think it is definitely coming but it's just, just really about the timing of things right and so um with you know you have one central bank who is you know remaining uh, has to get a bit hawkish uh, due to inflation but you've got another central bank who are you know maintaining the status quo for now um you know that's the reason why you're seeing prices go higher you know again I, as i say it's not for any other reason other than that, anyone tells you any differently, they don't know what they're talking about. This is nothing to do with Elliott Wave and this is Wave 3 or anything like that. Everything is driven by, um, you know, fundamentals and risk sentiment because that's where you, you know, uh, see value. And so um, ultimately, this is where, you know, prices are, are going to go, at least in the short term. And so when you're looking for a opportunity to go long, probably say any kind of pullback into this zone might be a bit early the 134s but decent but I think any pullbacks if you get one to 131s as long as the narrative is still supported by data and the Bank of Japan um, and the new governor you know don't change their their uh, monetary policy you know you would have to expect the the, the dollar yen to continue uh, rising um, higher so um, so yeah uh, that's where we are if you do want to look for a sell simply because you think that you know that's a decent level to get short off of then i think the uh the 138 is, is 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 okay but personally my bias for now um i'm watching this but i think my bias for now would be to the to the long side uh continued upside on the dollar yen uh, same thing with dollar swiss the dollar swiss is something that i'm actually um interested in if prices actually come back down into this zone then i will be looking for a buy if i'm looking to buy the dollar then i have to, i'd have to uh, do that against the swiss franc and actually the uh, dollar and, and against the canadian dollar so really again my bias is to the upside uh, to buy the dollar any pullbacks and again um price can pull back doesn't mean that you know the fundamentals have changed um you know prices just pull back for liquidity reasons right and for profit taking reasons um and it gives a chance for anyone who didn't buy at these areas right to buy again but again as long as the fundamentals have not changed and so um you know price and value is uh, two different things so um Ultimately, I want to be a buyer of this uh, currency pair if it presents the opportunity. So I think any kind of pullback down to those 0 0.92, 92 cent area, um, 92.40, I would be looking for a uh, potential buy on that. If you do want to get short on uh, this uh, Swiss franc, I think any of these zones to look for short trades. But I think the path of least resistance is to the upside. Uh, dollar CAD, again, I've been saying this for the past uh, couple of weeks the Bank of Canada is not looking to high rates anytime soon. So for me, I think any pullbacks into, you know, these zones are um, a buying opportunities. I prefer a deeper pullback, but um, 
if you do get a pullback into that 135 area and you think that's enough of a discount then um look for that you know area to be a buy personally i'd look for really the 13480 80s to be a buyer on this currency pair um from a sell perspective um i'd probably say really probably the higher zone uh would be really the sell right here i mean you do have the supply zone uh, if i'm drawing it it'd have to be yeah if i'm putting it from here but that level's been touched several times so i wouldn't expect that really to hold i'd probably say the fresher area up top and even higher um if we drag this actually all the way up to the top would probably be the uh, the better area when you get a, a wide zone like that um, of supply what you want to do is just break it up with um, areas of support and resistance it's like there's daily resistance there and levels been traded so and then you're looking at probably the, the absolute highs right there and in between those and again you can go down to the into the local levels like you know the four hour if you see any kind of four hour levels within that area of supply but overall you're looking at this as a an absolute high and this is an absolute low and where are we between that high and that low at the moment f between that high and that low uh 50 percent is known as fair value do you want to buy at fair value uh, me personally i'm looking at bargains so any kind of bargain price for the dollar us dollar any pullbacks is what i'm looking for and probably with a take profit of somewhere around as one three eight one three nines um moving on to the new zealand dollar and again with the um US dollar looking to price in more hikes. The dollar is, you know, continuing to strengthen. And again, I have no idea whether it's going to strengthen, you know, every single week in terms of, you know, what's going to happen every single week. Nobody will know, right? The dollar can still be a buy, but of course, you can get pullbacks during a longer downtrend, right? So ultimately, um, nobody really knows what's going to happen during the week. Um, but as long as the fundamentals, um, you know, remain uh, solid, if price is pulling back, you have to just look at that as a as a nice buying opportunity, right? If prices are getting cheaper and taking out a lot of uh, liquidity that is probably uh, building up above the market for it to, you know, reload to go shorter, uh, to go lower, I should say. So you do have, uh, you know, supply here as well. But for me, if I was looking to buy this, uh, buy the US dollar against the New Zealand dollar, which I'm actually not looking to do that, not this pair anyway, I would probably look for the 63 round number before looking at getting short. I think this area here is still a bit, um, not necessarily much of a bargain again, because if you consider uh, this as being an absolute, an absolute bargain for the US dollar and where we are now, where this is, you know, potentially considered expensive or could be expensive and most likely to be expensive because you're buying at lows right or you're buying at highs or selling at lows and one of the things that you don't ever want to do is is really sell at lows right or buy at highs so you have to wait for a pullback you know and again pullbacks at least into a decent pullback will be a, a decent area to look for um, some sort of uh, a trade and buying a value so that's where i would look to um you know enter if i was looking to trade this pair uh the the pound dollar now this is an interesting one because the pound um you know has had some positive data so hunt uh, set for 10 billion budget boost as uk economy improves and so uh you know britain's economic uh, prospects have improved enough to hand chancellor of the exchequer jeremy hunt an extra 10 billion at next month's uh, budget removing the threat of a further round of austerity experts say so um yeah it say it, it was talking about it says uh, the economic gr uh, growth has improved businesses have stepped up investment energy prices have fallen and tax receipts have been healthier than expected uh, that combination of factors is likely to have more than offset the impact of the obr's downward revisions and so um yeah there is some bright spots on the pound i'm still not convinced uh, personally uh, to buy the pound i'm still uh, my bias would be to short the pound and so um, if you're looking at uh, shorting the pound, um, then I would really look for any kind of pullback into, for me personally, the one two two area. I think that's really nice to get uh, to get short. If you're looking to buy the pound, I think I guess anywhere from now is quite a wide zone. But <coughs> this area of of support and resistance, which has been traded in the past, um, 
is decent. I think the absolute low, maybe the one eighteens, if you're looking to buy the pound against the dollar, um, is 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 um, a decent area. Looks look uh, looks like it is technically anyway. But um, I wouldn't necessarily, if I was going to be a buyer of the British pound, I wouldn't do it against the dollar because the dollar is obviously um, quite strong and appreciating, right? Um, but yeah, I think my, my bias is still, if I'm looking to buy either of the two, it would be uh, the dollar over the British pound for now. Uh, Euro uh, dollar, now this is where I am actually a buyer. I think the limit of this move has come down, uh, to, you know, the 105.50s, 105s. Now, um, again, I wouldn't say this is necessarily the absolute best trade in the world. Um, in terms of buying the euro, but I do think that there is going to be a, a bit of a um, a flaw to this, and so I do think that the overall auction, um, and when I say auction, fair value auction, I'm just basically saying that um, you know what what most people would describe as a um, as a range, um, which it really isn't a range; it actually it should be called a fair value auction. Um, I think we're at a very cheap area. In terms of buying the euro, um, so I do think that that is um, that this now is a decent buy. Uh, we could obviously come slightly lower. There are some areas of demand here, so demand, and then you've got another area down to the 103, 102. So I, I would be surprised if it did come down there. Um, but the euro at the moment, yeah, we do have high. Uh, core inflation as well so euro areas core inflation problem to come to the fore so china's pmis to provide to provide clues on success of economies reopening uh, and this is more to do with brazil but um it talks about fresh data from the eurozone are set to highlight why european central bank officials are hanging on to their hawkish tone even as the region's were worst uh, ever spike in prices recedes and so um, inflation is a problem everywhere and if you have two central banks that are looking to high crates yeah you've got the fed and you've got the ecb what typically should happen with price is that it should be a price acceptance and an auction that is uh you know accepted between you know whatever price which was at the moment is the 110s you know up here and possibly where the 105s are right that's what the, the logic is so um you know, I think that the euro is probably going to be cheap somewhere around these 105 areas. It could be cheap, you know, now, maybe slightly cheaper, but I do think around here should be decent uh, for a buy. And I'm, I'm looking for an entry um, on obviously, I say obviously, but on a lower time frame or a higher time frame, depending on, uh, you know, what it gives me. And I think uh, that the there should be a bit of respite on the, um, on the dollar strength if the euro uh, and the ECB are still hawkish and the data supports that narrative. So um, that's where I am on that. Uh, Aussie dollar, again, with the dollar strengthening, um, I think the Australian dollar has suffered a little bit. There's been a really, um, quite a wide zone of uh, demand around here. But again, if you're looking at um, breaking that zone up, um, within that zone, look for major levels of of support and resistance which we're at right now and so um, Australia is definitely one of my uh, top buyers as we go into for 2023 based off of China reopening and hopefully China's reopening is positive because if it's not then uh, I think the Australian dollar could end up falling even further but um, as long as you know China's reopening zero COVID policy is going well I do actually think that the Australian dollar should be a decent buy and if you re really just look at where we are uh, over the past um, you know maybe four or five months you think this low to this high really prices are just putting back right into um, some sort of uh, fair value because again that to there and if you go fair value right fair value is actually around about the 66 70s and so um, I think this area here is going to be very interesting for a potential buy on the Australian dollar um, if you want to buy the Australian dollar against the US dollar that is um, that's an interesting area but I'm staying away from this I've got my eye on other Australian uh, dollar pairs that I think are better um, suited and um, uh, are likely to go a bit higher um, and so yeah that's where we are if you're looking to buy the um, the, the the US dollar and you've got several zones in fact just above you which is 
going to be that supply zone there you've got another supply zone there you've got one here and then you've got one at the highs and so um yeah i think that's uh these ones are okay i think probably around a 69 will be probably the better area to look for any kind of short trades um but again not really a pair i'm looking to i'm looking to trade at all um but I do think this is uh, quite interesting um, going forward, especially into the second half of the year where the actual US dollar is expected to um, decrease in value um, once the uh, their hiking cycle comes to an end and they hopefully get a, a grip on inflation. If they don't, then they're going to continue to hike. Um, gold. Now, gold, again, because the dollar has um, increased in value, that has an inverse effect on gold. But gold... Remember that colossal central bank buying drives uh, gold demand to decade uh, high. And this was about a couple of weeks ago to uh, 31st of January. So this was obviously the headline um, around here, right? Around, uh, yeah, towards the end of January. Um, and of course, whenever you see the headlines, uh, the smart money have made their money, right? And the headlines, and so it's not surprising to see prices actually just pull back. And uh, again, if you look at you know where prices were from November to the highs, we actually haven't had a decent pullback for ages, for months. And so this, as the dollar starts to strengthen uh, temporarily, I don't think it's going to strengthen for for too much longer of course long enough for us potential to make some money or for me to make some money off it um but into the you know towards the end of the maybe the second half of the year um or towards the end of the first half of the year into the second half of the year i think the dollar should um start to uh, uh devalue and so now anyone who missed out on this you know these big moves right who wanted to buy gold um you know, back in November, December, and now and now I've got their chance, right? They've got their chance to now start buying gold. Um, if you missed out on this uh, this this big run, and so um, the central banks are buying, and when they start buying, they don't just you know stop buying. By the way, they they typically buy for uh, and start hoarding for for months and years, matter of fact. And so, um, yeah, I do think this is another opportunity for them to start to look for any kind of long trades. And again, if, you, if you're thinking more long term, on the horizon, um, dollar devaluation potentially coming as the Fed start to end their hiking cycle. And then um, you've got the expectation that the US is going to head into a recession come either the end of 2023 or into 2024. And so we look at 2024, right? And if, you're, if you've got your eye on 2024 and you're thinking to yourself, okay, you've got recession coming, you've got you know rate cuts coming, where are you gonna put your money? And where do you want to start buying gold? People can start buying gold from now, right? You start buying gold years ahead because um, you know at least months ahead in anticipation of these types of uh, events, right? And so, and, and risk off events that are happening in the world, right? And so gold, um, for me, any pullbacks are decent buys um, around these areas. So, um, yep, that's the really the, 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 the longer term path, the shorter term path obviously would be for you. If you are looking to trade gold, then you're looking at, um, you know, and buying the US dollar, then you'd have to look for to these areas here and any pullbacks to these supply zones as being, um, you know, short, uh, short trades, right? In, in anticipation of uh, the Fed hiking um, uh, for uh, more and for, and for longer, at least, you know, uh, over the next uh, few months or so. And so um, that is gold now. The eagle eye amongst you might have seen uh, the euro cad and thinking to yourself why have i put the euro cad and it's something i've decided to do each week and really kind of show you um you know that we do take trades at trading 180 um don't really talk about trades too much but um uh yeah i, I do like a trade of the week um uh, uh just to show you basically a bit more extra um on uh, any kind of charts and um, the analysis and so uh, yeah, yeah this was my trade of the week this is basically what happened um, a couple of weeks ago this was on the 10th of February and actually hit you know uh, targets or um, partial targets anyway on the um, couple of days ago so um, looking at this and just going back and just showing you why now we have a spreadsheet in tra trading 180 in the mentoring group uh, column J is where I show everybody um, 
my my bias and uh, L basically means my biases to the long side. These don't these uh, biases don't really change too often, and anyone who's been in the group can attest to this. I've been we've been long EuroCAD for a uh, for a while for a good few months, as the uh, Canadian dollar has um, and the Bank of Canada have. Uh, held rates and the European Central Bank are hawkish, right? So that alone, just or just based on that alone, it makes it's, it makes all the sense in the world to try and get long. And so, um, uh, this was a video that again um, is for the members only, and I do a weekend video which goes through pretty much most of the pairs that I'm all of the pairs that I'm trading anyway. And this was on the 11th of February, uh, my weekly fundamental resentment analysis for the private members, which goes into, you know, obviously the strategies and the reasons why. And you can see here that, um, you know, this is where we were placing, well, I was placing my uh, uh, stop loss and I was going, um, just basically explaining in this video, the setups, the reasons why, etc. And uh, yeah, basically this is what happens. So this ended up being a nice uh, 2.3 to one. I'm actually still in this position. I took four positions on this, took two positions up top. Um, so that's a profitable trade now. And I've got two, which I'm uh, swing trading, uh, one to the one point four five area and one maybe that might go beyond that who knows but um let's see what happens depends on how hawkish the uh, the ecb is but yeah uh this was basically my trade uh, of the week euro cad uh, made all the uh, fundamental sense in the world not too many traders would have uh, would have bought here right not too many trades would have bought here um you know especially after this massive uh, bearish candle right who's buying here who is going to buy here? Put pretty much um, nobody if you're a technical trader. But if you understand fundamental analysis, yeah, you would have been or should have been at least a bit confident that that was actually a bargain price because it was a bargain price here, right? And so I was just basically showing in that video that I'm looking to put my uh, where I'm looking to enter right at the end of the candle, best price. Put the uh, um, oh, pause that. Um, and then put my stop loss uh, 80 pips below and uh, yeah there was there it was and there was the trade worked out which is still you know I'm still obviously looking to swing trade the rest and so yeah that's where we are and um, and yeah that was my uh, trade of the week so guys hope you have a great trading week uh, I'll try and get back to uh, any of your comments if you do have any questions uh, definitely put them in the um, the question box, uh, the comment box below. Um, please, you know, think through your questions. Don't ask me how do I trade fundamental analysis. It's a silly question because it's so, you know, it's like asking me how long is a piece of string. Be a bit more specific. And uh, if it's a good question or something that I can get back to um, that doesn't take too long to answer because things can be in depth, then I then I definitely will try to get back to you uh, and uh, try and put you at least on the right path. Anyways, guys, take care. Have a good trading week and speak to you all soon.